Hello everyone, Hyper here and welcome to the Frost DK guide for patch 8.1.5. Before we jump into the actual content, make sure to check out my represent.com store where you can buy my merch, this shirt included. I have all the shirts in black and white and ranging from shirts to long sleeves to hoodies. So if you want to support me further and look fresh in the meantime, make sure to check those out. If you would like up to a week of early access on these video guides and written guides, then make sure to check out my Patreon. And that's just some of the perks that you will get if you choose to support me in that way. But now let's jump into the actual Frosty K guide. Let's take a look at the talents that we will use for raiding. In the first row, you will always take Cold Heart in both AoE and single target situations. And this is because Cold Heart just fits into the Frosty K toolkit very well since it does line up with every single pillar of Frost. In the second row, we take Runic Attenuation. This is a resource generation row and RA synergizes best with Breath of Sindragosa. In tier three, this is a purely utility row where you take whatever you prefer. Uh, in most cases, I end up either running Asphyxiate or Death's Reach, depending on the bosses, but Blinding Sleep does have its merits mainly in Mythic Plus. In tier four, you will be taking Frozen Pulse, and this is Again, just a simple numerical row. Uh, Frozen Pulse works out to be the most damage on single target as long as you kind of play around it a little bit and make sure that you're not stacking up too many runes so to let this Frozen Pulse buff fall off. Then going on to tier five, again, a utility slash defensive row. Now here, if you feel like you're lacking mobility, go ahead and take Wraith Walk. I don't really see a reason in most cases to be playing Death Pact or Permafrost unless you're getting to progress on some of the later bosses of the raid, but especially on the earlier bosses, you're definitely well within your defensive capabilities with just AMS and Icebound Fortitude to just play Wraith Walk for the extra movement speed. Tier six, this is kind of a tricky one. In most single target cases, you will want to take Frostworm's Fury. I have seen some logs who play Gathering Storm and it's mostly done with either two or three traits of Frozen Tempest. But by default, I definitely suggest just sticking with Frostworm's Fury. It's a hard hitting cooldown. As, as long as you use it correctly, it will be a very, very beneficial ability to have. Then in the last tier, Breath of Syndragosa hands down. It just does the most damage and the other two talents cannot even compete with it. Moving on to Cleave and AoE talents. The first two rows remain unchanged. We still take Cold Heart and Runic Attenuation for the same reasons. Tier three, again, is completely up to you. Uh, for raiding, either Death's Reach or Asphyxiate, depending on the bosses. And then for Mythic Plus, probably Blinding Sleet, uh, just to get that mass interrupt. Tier four, however, here we take Frost Sight. And I will talk a little more about Frost Sight and how it fits into the rotation later on. But basically, on anything above two targets, Frost Sight will be better than Frozen Pulse. Uh, tier 5, again, utility and defensive, completely up to you. In tier 6, you will have two choices for AoE, either Frostworm's Fury or Gathering Storm. And the difference between the two is really only the damage profile. In certain situations, Frostworm's Fury will be better, in others, Gathering Storm. So if, for example, you're pulling consistently every trash pack, uh, just doing one pack at a time, then probably Gathering Storm will be better because you're never pulling a massive group. However, if you're pulling a massive group, then pulling small until your cooldowns recover, then again doing a massive pull, then Frostworm's Fury will be better because it's much more bursty damage. So again, here your the choice is really up to you, but uh, you can get away using both of these talents in both cleave and AoE situations. And then in tier 7, obviously Breath of Syndragosa. So now that we have the talents figured out, let's take a look at Azurite traits, stats, and trinkets. So starting off with Azurite traits here. For single target, there will be two Azurite traits that you will want to focus on. First one is Treacherous Covenant, and second one is Icy Citadel. Now Icy Citadel actually ends up being kind of a subpar single target trait. However, from the raid items, most of the items that have Treacherous Covenant will also have Icy Citadel on them, so you just end up taking it because Treacherous Covenant is such a big damage gain. Um, Icy Citadel does change our gameplay a little bit, but I will talk about that in the advanced tip section. With Treacherous Covenant, 
You simply just want to make sure you stay above that health threshold to get the benefit for as long as possible. On Cleave and AoE, we have two traits that are extremely strong. First one is Frozen Tempest, and this is by far our strongest trait when it comes to Cleave and AoE. Um, so it, you get a huge amount of value by running at least one of these traits on three or more targets. But even stacking three of them, you will still gain more damage than you do with Echo and Howl. Um, however, Echo and Howl is a very good substitute, and quite a few rate pieces and dungeon pieces that you can buy from the vendor end up having Frozen Tempest and Echo and Howl, which is an absolutely insane combination for AoE and Cleave. And the only way that this will change your rotation is that every time you Remorseless Winter, you get a free proc of Rhyme to use on the Howling Blast. So the only thing that you have to pay attention to is that you don't have a Rhyme right before you press a Remorseless Winter. Other than that, everything stays the same. And another thing is that if you run a Frozen Tempest trait and you're doing a raid boss, let's say you run this trait just for some cleave and extra add damage, you will actually end up incorporating your Remorseless Winter into your single target rotation because of the added benefit from this trait. As far as stats go, luckily for Frost DK, stats for both single target and AoE are the same, so you don't have to have two separate setups. Um, your highest valued stat will always be Mastery, because all of our hard hitting abilities and important abilities do frost damage with get, which get buffed by our Mastery. However, Critical Strike is a very very close second on single target. On AoE, Mastery will pull further ahead, however on single target, your Mastery and your crit will be very close together. Then your third best will be Haste, uh, up to a point, then Versatility, and your lowest will be Strength. And this is due to the eye level that we've reached in the expansion. Uh, in the first raid and the first tier, strength was one of our highest uh, valued secondary stats, or just stats in general, I suppose. However, as you increase your eye level, your strength will decrease because you gain more value from your secondaries. So we've hit that point where strength is our lowest considered stat. So Frost DK has a very wide selection when it comes to trinkets, and this is a very good thing. You can get trinkets from Mythic Plus, from the raid, and from PvP, all of which can be very, very beneficial at high eye level. So from the raid, the only trinket that I would really go for is Grongs, and even this you kind of want to avoid just because you tend to run another unused trinket, and if you end up having Grongs, you will definitely be running double on use which can still work out, but it is a little more difficult and trickier to pull off. So if you are running Grongs and you're running a double on you setup, then make sure that you just use your stat boost trinket with your Breath of Syndragosa and your opener, and then you just use Grongs whenever your Pillar of Frost, your Breath of Syndragosa, everything is over, and you're sitting at, th at three runes or below. And this is just to avoid overcapping runes in that four second period when you're incapacitated. There's a few other trinkets that are very good for Frost DK. From PvP, we obviously have Gladiator's Badge. And this will be one of the highest rated trinkets uh, at equal eye level to other trinkets, just because of the sheer amount of strength it gives you whenever you use it. And it's also a two minute cooldown, so it lines up with your cooldowns. From Mythic Plus, we have two trinkets that are very beneficial. The first one is the Butcher's Block, which drops from Waycrest Manor. And this gives you strength and procs crit. And the second trinket is the Vial of Animated Blood from Underrot, and this is again an unused trinket that gives you strength which decays over time. So as you can see, Frost DK has a huge selection of trinkets, and I only really mentioned the ones that most people end up using, however there are a few other ones that if you get at high enough eye level they will be pretty good, just make sure to sim them. Now that we have the talents and the gear taken care of, let's take a look at the rotation. And Frost DK has a reputation for being very simple to play, which is true to an extent. However, there are some very basic mistakes that you can make, which will cost you a lot of damage. But let's start with the opener here. So the opener will be fairly standard every single pull. You always want to go in with three obliterates. Now between these obliterates, you might get rhyme procs, and if you get those procs, then make sure to just use them on Howling Blast. Once you've gotten your third obliterate off, you will be out of runes, and this is where you have to wait usually 2-3 to three seconds. My default uh, go-to whenever I'm thinking about when to pop my Hungering Rune Weapon is to take a look at my runes. Right as my third rune is about to be full, I pop my Hungering Rune Weapon. 
and then I wait the global cooldown, and then I pop my Pillar of Frost with my Breath of Sindragosa and whatever stat boosting on use trinket I have. So it's very good to have those three macro together. And if you're not sure how to do that, check out the description box where I will have a sample to how that should be set up. Now during Breath of Sindragosa, your rotation will be very, very simple. Whenever you dip below 75 runic power, you want to use Obliterate. Whenever you get Rhyme procs and you're in, not in danger of your Breath of Sindragosa falling off, you want to use that on Howling Blast. If you're a Blood Elf, then again, that cutoff where you should be Arcane Torrenting is typically when you drop below 75 runic power and you're out of runes to use on your Obliterates. Now, as your Pillar of Frost approaches its end, you will look to use Cold Heart and Frostworm's Fury. This is because whenever you spend the rune in Pillar of Frost, it will actually increase its efficiency. So you keep getting more and more strength as you spend runes throughout your Pillar of Frost. So the last two abilities that you press while Pillar of Frost is active will be Chains of Ice with the Cold Heart talent, obviously, and Frostworm's Fury. Now, there will be some uh, changes whether you actually press these as the last two globals, but I will talk about those in the advanced tip section. If you're just worried about a default rotation during Breath of Sindragosa and during Pillar of Frost, your last two globals will always be Chains of Ice, then Frostworm's Fury, then your Pillar of Frost will fall off. Another thing that is worth mentioning here is that during Breath of Sindragosa, even on single target without any Frozen Tempest traits, you might run into the situation where it's worth actually pressing Remorseless Winter. And there's essentially two situations where this is true. The first one is if you only have one rune and your Breath of Sindragosa is in danger of falling off, then you want to press your Remorseless Winter because that will maybe boost you enough to where another two runes will come back in time to keep extending that. The other situation is if you're overcapping runes and runic power. Now, if you're sitting at, let's say, 80 runic power and you're at like five runes, it's definitely worth press pressing one global cooldown for Remorseless Winter. You don't get that much runic power, but again, you minimize the resources that you waste during Breath of Sindragosa. Now, taking a look at the regular rotation outside of Breath of Sindragosa, this is super simple. Your highest priority will always be using Howling Blast whenever you get those Rhyme procs. Remorseless Winter, if you have two or more targets, or if you're running the Frozen Tempest trait, then you just want to press it on cooldown. And then you want to obliterate if you're below 75 runic power, or you get a KM proc. So obviously, always avoid overcapping runic power or runes. So here, you're just spending obliterates and spending frost strikes to spend that runic power. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward and very simple to do. Since Frost Decay relies on cooldowns to line up to do very good damage, luckily we have a very, very predictable pattern whenever using our cooldowns, and you can see that here on the screen. So on pull, we will actually end up using all three of our cooldowns, plus Cold Heart and Frostworm's Fury. So this is all of our cooldowns. Then, be before your next set of big cooldowns will come up, you will be able to Pillar of Frost twice and Cold Heart twice within those Pillar of Frost. And then your Breath of Sindragosa comes back up with your Hungering Rune weapon, so you just pop those all together. And this will just alternate throughout the fight. Now your Frostworm's Fury will come up on your fourth Pillar of Frost. This is where knowing how long a fight will take actually comes into play. Because if you're able to fit uh, only two Frostworm's Furies into the entire fight, then it's probably worth saving it until your third Breath of Sindragosa. However, if you're maybe able to get three, then you will want to pop it as soon as possible. So again, this is just kind of knowing fight timers. But the cooldown pattern is very, very simple to understand for Frost DK. It's a huge cooldown overlap, then two Pillar of Frost, then huge cooldown overlap with Breath of Syndragosa, then two Pillar of Frost, then again, huge cooldown overlap. This next segment will be some advanced tips for Frost DKs. And the first topic here will be Cold Heart and Frostworm's Fury usage, because these two follow a very, very similar logic to when you should pop them on single target. Now, in the rotation segment of this video, I said that Cold Heart and then Frostworm's Fury should be the last two global cooldowns before your Pillar of Frost runs out. And this is true to an extent. 
If you get Unholy Strength procs during your Pillar of Frost, this will kind of change it up. Now obviously sometimes the star is lined up and you get a perfect proc where your Unholy Strength will not run out before your Pillar of Frost, so you're able to fit those into the last two global cooldowns. But other times you might get a Unholy Strength proc maybe 5 to 6 seconds before your Pillar of Frost is even pressed. And this means that your Unholy Strength will be running out before your Pillar of Frost. So what you should do in situations like that is make sure that your Cold Heart and your Frostworm's Fury get used within the Pillar of Frost and Unholy Strength combo. And I definitely recommend having some sort of weak chorus, tell me when, whatever add-on you prefer that allows you to easily keep track of both of those buffs, Pillar of Frost and Unholy Strength. Whenever both of those are up, you will get the highest damage possible out of your Cold Heart and Frostworm's Fury. And since Frostworm Fury, uh, you will more likely than not always use it within a Breath of Sindragosa cooldown rotation, you will also have a potion for it, and you will also have a unused trinket for it. So all of those things pop together will provide a huge, huge strength boost to your Frostworm's Fury. Now Cold Heart, obviously it's a lot shorter cooldown and you can pop it with every single Pillar of Frost. With Cold Heart, you just want to pay attention at that to that unholy strength. Whenever you have it up during Pillar of Frost, make sure you use that Cold Heart with unholy strength. And you can min-max this even a little bit further. There is a cutoff point where it's not worth fishing for unholy strength procs. And what I mean by that is that maybe you have a proc that will time out in the first three seconds of your Pillar of Frost. Well, that means that you still have quite a lot of time where you can potentially get another proc. Because Unholy Strength has a very high uptime, usually you will get between a 50-60% to 60 uptime on most bosses. So you have a fairly good chance that you will get a second proc within the Pillar of Frost. However, if your proc runs out and there's only 8 seconds left on your Pillar of Frost, then it will be worth using your Cold Heart and Frostworm's Fury, because after that, uh, it is much more unlikely that you will get another proc. Now the second thing here is Icy Citadel, and this Azerite trade made a comeback in BOD and became quite popular because it is associated with a lot of raid pieces that also have Treacherous Covenant on them. And since Treacherous Covenant is so good, you're kind of forced into taking Icy Citadel at least two or two, even maybe three of those traits. So what my suggestion is, is that if you're running two Icy Citadels, don't change up your rotation. Just think about it as a passive strength gain and don't change up anything that you were doing before. However, if you're running three of these traits, there are a few things that you can potentially minimax. At three traits, you will get just a little over 3,300 strength at 415 eye level. And that is a quite significant boost. So what this means is that in your opener, whenever your Cold Heart and your Frostworm line up with Breath of Sindragosa and your unused Trinket and your Potion, you will look to use your Cold Heart simply within Pillar of Frost, just to make sure you get all those benefits on top of it. However, for the other uh, Cold Hearts in the fight that do not line up with Breath of Sindragosa and your unused Trinket, you will actually look to min-max your Unholy Strength. So normally, you only have the duration of Pillar of Frost to actually fish for Unholy Strength procs. However, with this trait, just think about it as a 6 second extension to the time that you have to fish for procs. And you can use that Cold Heart either in your Pillar of Frost or in the Icy Citadel buff. And what will determine where you use it is simply Unholy Strength. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you feel like I skipped any of the information that you were curious about, then make sure to check out my written guide, which is linked in the description box. Or if you have some specific questions, then just go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. Again, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button and sub to the channel. I'll see you guys on the next one.